Hello everybody. I want to uh, show you a quick video today. It's uh, how to make your own laundry soap. It's something I do quite often. I've done it for a number of years. It's something I enjoy doing and it does save you quite a bit of money and I'll go over uh, the cost and uh, things that you need to make it with. First of all you're going to need the uh, borax. You're going to need a Felis, or Felis Nafta bar of laundry soap. And uh, you're also going to need the Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda Laundry Booster. And you're only going to need one cup of it, one bar of the Phil's Nafta soap, and you're going to need a half a cup of Borox. And we'll get started with this and show you what to do. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking this bar here, which is a Phil's Nafta. I'm going to use a cheese grater. All I did is just went to the dollar store. These things are cheap. They're like a dollar or so. And I'm just going to use it. It's the only thing I use it on, so I don't use it on my food, so don't worry about that. But I'm just going to take this bar, and I'm going to grate it up into this bowl. Just using, I just use the big one here. And just do it like you would a normal cheese or anything like that. And I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll go past this. I'll get this done up for you, and then we'll get back to this just in a minute. As you can see, I'm just grating this up. It almost uh, has a consistency of what cheese it actually looked like. Uh, just do this whole bar, and then we'll uh, put it into the water. Okay. Okay, now I have finished grating the Phil's Nafta uh, laundry bar. And as you can see, I've got a medium saucepan with about four, four uh, cups of water in it, four to five cups of water. I've got it on high. As you can see, it's starting to heat up. What we're going to do next is we're going to just add this in into the water and then we're going to melt this. Melt this down to a nice consistency. And you will want to stay with this and constantly stir this. Because if you leave this and if you leave this unattended while you're doing this, it, it will quickly overboil and will make a mess all over your stove. It will take a few minutes to do this, so I won't take your time up while you just watch me do this, but probably three to five minutes of doing this constantly, and then uh, we'll get right back to what it looks like, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I've got my soap melted, and uh, it's about what it looks like when it's done. I went ahead and pulled it off the eye. I know it's kind of hard to tell because of all the bubbles on top where I've been mixing it. But this is completely melted. It's something that you really want to make sure that you do because you don't want to have chunks in it. Because this is pretty much the only chance you've got to melt your soap down to where you need it to be. So just make sure you, you do a good job with that and make sure you get all the soap melted to where you don't have any chunks in it. Okay, the only other thing I didn't mention is that what you're going to need. You're going to need you a... Uh, five gallon pail uh, you can get these anywhere you can get them at your local Walmart hardware stores things like that um, you will need a lid for it because you will be storing your soap in it uh, you can also just as ideas you may be able to go to uh, if you have like a local bakery or maybe your local grocery store that has a bakery in it uh, a lot of these places just throw these things away that they have like icing and different mixes and stuff like that that they may do. They may use and make cakes and bakery stuff and all. A lot of these, like I say, a lot of these places just throw these things away or they may even give it to you for like a couple of dollars or something or maybe even go to some of your local flea markets and stuff. You may be able to find people who have used buckets. I would suggest that you get a bucket that's not been used for chemicals. Uh, simply for you're going to be using uh, this for your laundry, uh, even though they may be cleaned out, I would really suggest maybe using one that's had some sort of food in it, just uh, just more as a safety kind of thing, I would think. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this five-gallon bucket, you're going to fill it up about halfway with hot water, just hot tap water, and then we're going to mix the rest of the solution together. I'm going to go ahead and fill this up, and then we'll go from there. Okay. As you can see now, I have my hot water in my bucket, so I'm going to take and uh, go ahead and 
pour in the soap, which is melted. Uh, just pour it straight in. Okay, I got all my soap in. Now, I'm going to continue with putting half a cup of borax just right into the mix. And then, okay, and then I'm going to brew in the one cup of uh, Arm & Hammer washing soda. I'm going to pour it straight in. And I'm just simply going to take a whisk and I'm going to mix this. I want to make sure I mix it really well. Just take a couple minutes and get all this mixed in. Okay, now that I've got my soap in here, I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of this up with uh, warm tap water. And I'm only going to fill it up to about, <clears throat> about this mark right here because you don't want to fill it all the way to the top. And uh, the reason for that is once you do let this set and uh, congeal, you're going to want to have some mixing room. So if you're all the way to the top, then you're not going to have any room to uh, do that with. And uh, what I usually do, once you put your lid on it, um, what I always do is I like to date mine. This is uh, actually 411 of 18. Today is uh, 6 6 of 18. So you're looking at almost two months, uh, depending on how much you use or how much you actually do laundry and all. So now that we've got this all buttoned up, I'm going to take this and I'm going to take this to my basement. And that's usually where I just store it. Uh, just take it and put it in a, uh, a cool, dark place or just a place that's out of your way, actually. And uh, wait at least 24 hours. I would suggest uh, at least 24 hours or longer if you can. Um, I generally wait two or three days. I usually try to make this uh, at least two or three days before I actually need it. So that gives your, your product plenty of time to uh, congeal. And then uh, we're going to put this away and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like after. Okay, so it's been a few days after we put this away. We're going to open this up. I'm going to let you see what it looks like. And it may be hard to be able to tell on camera, but this is actually just a, a small thing of water on top. And this is actually uh, congealed. I don't know if you can tell that. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this. Uh, you can do this with uh, a big wooden spoon or something else like that that you can do. Uh, I actually, what I actually started doing, I did that for years like that, but what I actually found that was easier was I went to my uh, local hardware store and I bought one of these paddles. This is like a, a paint paddle. This one here is actually quite long though, but I wanted something that would easily reach the bottom of the bucket so I wouldn't have to worry about it. Uh, you can get these for, I think I gave like five dollars for this thing, but it's going to save you a lot of headaches by using something like this. And all you have to do is just hook it to your drill, put it in, and mix it up. Now that I've got it in, I'm just going to put that in. As you can see how it just goes all the way to the bottom. Just turn it on nice and slow. Just so you won't throw it all in the floor. And all you want to do is just mix it up till you get a good consistency of it. You don't have any lumps in it anymore. Just move it around. See it doesn't take but just a, just a couple of seconds here and you're going to have a good mix. Okay, now that I've got it mixed up, you can see there's no more chunks in it. It's nice and smooth is what you want to do. And there's no separation of the water and all. So all I'm going to do now is basically, I usually take, uh, you can take any kind of container you want to, but it's just something that everybody has. So I just recycle it. It's just a, uh, a gallon milk jug. Just cleaned it out really well. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it half with a mixture and half with hot water. And then all you're going to do is every time you go to use it, just shake it up briefly and then uh, pour it into your washer. And uh, the washer I have is a high efficiency washer. So some of you may be wondering, well, will it work in a high efficiency washer? I use it in mine all the time. No issues with it. Um, so I'm going to fill this up and then I'm going to get started. Okay, as you can see, I've got it in my jug, uh, half and half. And like I say, just mix it up each time before you go to use it. Uh, some of you may be wondering, well, how much do you use in your high efficiency to, uh, wash machine? My washer has a max fill line the, that you're not to exceed. I always just fill it up to that. I really don't measure it any other way. Um, I really, really don't think it's necessary myself, but that's what I do personally, and I don't have any issues with it, and that's how I do on each and every load of laundry that I do. Okay, so what we're going to do to now is get into what does it actually cost to make it and how much money can you potentially save. Okay, now we'll get down into cost, what it actually costs me to make it. Um, this is the prices at my local Walmart. Phil's NAFTA was for the bar was one dollar. The super washing soda was three ninety seven, which is a three pound seven ounce box. The borax was a four pound box and one ounce, four pounds one ounce, and it was four forty seven. So it was a total of nine dollars and forty four cents. Okay, so what I used to use all the time was gain and the the 150 fluid ounce uh, jug that you would buy that you'd self dispense and all uh, and it was 13.44 is what I would buy for it and surprisingly the gain usually lasted me about about the, exactly probably about the same amount of time about a month and a half uh, to two months because I do do quite a, a bit of laundry and stuff okay but so you're probably thinking all right uh, the gain is 1344 and to make the soap is 944 so that's only a difference of four dollars and you might be thinking well that's only four dollars and then I've got to make the stuff and mix it and all that kind of things like that so I'm not really saving but four dollars why would I want to just do it for four dollars difference well let me tell you in two months when I have to go back and buy this for 1344 this is only going to cost me a dollar next time and the reason this is only going to cost me a dollar next time is because the only thing I have to buy is the Phil's NAFTA bar. It's the only non-thing I can't reuse. These here are three pounds and four pound boxes. These will make multiple things of soap. So instead of paying nine forty-four, I'm only going to pay a dollar. So this thirteen forty-four suddenly now I've saved twelve dollars and forty-four cents. And this is month after month after month until I run out of this. And then it's just still only going to cost me $9.44. So just to give you a little idea of, of the cost factor, it doesn't really take maybe 15, maybe 20 minutes if it if tops. If, and that would be making it and then after congealed, you're mixing it and putting it together and, doing your, and, and starting your laundry. Uh, maybe 15, maybe 20 minutes at the most. So I think... If you're someone who likes to save money, likes to do stuff on your own, uh, kind of has the satisfaction of doing something that can save you some money, then I highly suggest you try this if you haven't already, and uh, you have a great day.